I've had a few emails asking me if I know of any cheap license free radios with encryption and or voice scrambling options that will enable a group of people to converse in privacy at a low cost. There are some off the shelf PMR radios that do offer this feature however they often cannot be easily modified and there are even cheaper radios that are available that can be configured to offer even more security by means of a simple programming cable and operating the radios in a manner that I will explain in this video. Discrete comms is a very useful feature. The one group in particular who contacted me wanted a set of radios that they can use in areas of no cell phone coverage whilst they coordinate tracking of stolen equipment. They want cheap and secure local comms in their group to help prevent perps and or the general public knowing what they are up to. They also want to use some of this equipment mobile whilst on motorbikes. That again doesn't cost a fortune like many of the Bluetooth options that are currently available. I am going to rule out network radios here as even they can't beat the low price of entry level fully configurable radios with the voice scrambling features offered in the Chinese marketplace. Whilst groups often use programs like Skype and Zello for such operations, these solutions rely on cell or Wi-Fi network availability, which isn't always great and or available, depending upon your location. Looking at the options that are available, there aren't that many that don't break the £50 DMR entry level, per radio. But I'm going to outline a radio that does and easily meets this criteria and is probably the best radio for the money that does. And it's the one that I have reviewed recently and that radio is the fully analog Radio Oddity R2. I picked up a set of six of these radios delivered to me here in the UK from Amazon for £66, which is amazing value at just £11 per radio, a price which includes a desktop charger and an earpiece mic, quite amazing value and shouldn't break even the tightest budgets. I would look to program this set of radios onto the PMR frequencies. That way the units are available to use by non-licensed operators, even though the radios don't exactly fit the legal definition of a compliant PMR FRS radio, and I know this is getting even stricter in the States recently, with the FCC advisory on the importing and use, and use of radios that can be programmed out of band. If you're in the States and you're watching this and are concerned, there are videos on YouTube about this, it's worth looking into and considering this before you make any purchase. For really secure comms you could of course use encrypted digital DMR radios but this is encryption slash security on a budget and I got six of these radios literally for the price of one DMR radio. So you have to look at the cost versus the privacy option. The group that contacted me are primarily looking at cost here so we are going to look at a budget route. The R2 uses a form of voice inversion for encryption which is an analogue method of voice scrambling and whilst it doesn't really offer a proper secure solution it will prevent the average Joe from listening in and stumbling across your conversations. Contrary to some movie and TV show plot lines most criminals don't run around with radio scanners not here in the UK at least as there is little point. I don't imagine the R2 radios employ the more complex role in code inversion techniques of voice scrambling, but probably employ the very basic process of amplitude modulating the voice signal with the carrier and applying a sideband filter to decode it at the other end. Without filtration, it makes the audio very hard to decipher by a casual observer. Of course, those with more determination and reason could filter out the voice component and if that is of a concern then this method of security is not for you and you may be better off with a more expensive digital solution. You can however combine this very basic level of analogue security with other practices to help avoid your chances of detection and I will outline these bullet points here. Number 1. Program the radios up onto the higher allocation of PMR FRS frequencies. Many off-the-shelf PMR and FRS radios come with only the first 8 channels programmed as standard. The first 8 in the allowable block of 16 channels for PMR and 22 for FRS. This will help reduce the chance of someone or the target of your surveillance dropping in onto your comms. For PMR there are a total of 16 allowable channels so you could use channels 9 to 16 which are 446-10625 to 446-19375 and for FRS channels 9 to 22. Number two, use of non-standard CTCSS or if supported DCS tones. Many of the radios will come with a standard 67 Hz programmed for the CTCSS privacy tone. 
If you change this to something different, it's less likely somebody locally that's operating a radio will be able to stumble across your transmission, but it's certainly better not to use the standard CD-CSS tone of 67 Hz. Number three, restrict the power. Now, if you don't need lots of range, it's a good idea to restrict the power. This can be done via software and in most cases and in some cases is selectable or programmable on the radio buttons. If operating in a group and distances are relatively close then reducing the power lessens the chance of your conversation being detected by others and with the added benefit of increasing standby time of the radios. Under extreme circumstances inline attenuators could be fitted to reduce the low power to just a few milliwatts. Number 4. Cross Channel Offers you another level of security. If you program the radio so that they transmit on one of the channels but receive on a different channel, it makes it less likely a casual observer will easily be able to hear both sides of the conversation without using two radios or channel hopping, which isn't very practical. Again, this might not be legal in your area of operation, so please bear that in mind. Number 5. Coded Messaging Another very practical and basic practice is to establish coded messaging, particularly if privacy and or mission security is critical. The use of predetermined code words or operational code phrases can greatly reduce eavesdroppers who have got around your other levels of encryption or security. The police often use this mode of conversation even when using secure radio comms for this exact reason and it also being a throwback to the days when in the UK the radios weren't encrypted. Number 6. Should a third party try and infiltrate the group and mimic operators to gain information? If you are suspect or want a verification technique, you can employ this basic strategy and this is one that we used to use in nighttime paintballing games to establish if team players in the dark who are not identifiable were on our side. Simply agree on a number before your operation, let's just say 13 for example, then simply quote any value between 0 to 13 to the person you need to verify and they should come back with an answer that adds up to 13. So if you say 4, the person should come back with 9 and so on. It's a very basic level of security that also works well if your radio stopped working and it's dark and you need to know if the voice in the dark is indeed a friend or a foe. Number 7. Discretion Another often overlooked point in covert operations is simply one of discretion. Don't advertise the fact that you, you are using radios in the first place by showing no physical sign of the radios whilst your group is operating. Particularly if your operations are ongoing day to day, the R2 comes with an earpiece microphone as standard, although more discreet throat mics and earbuds can be used to make operation almost undetectable. All the cheap Chinese radios employ some form of voice activated transmission, which gives you the ability to operate hands free, which is useful when operating, driving and or on a motorcycle. However, the Im implementation of the Vox systems isn't always great in terms of sensitivity of operation, so a safe to operate and discrete manual push to talk button is always a better bet. This allows the radio to be seconded within the operator's clothing, keeping it dry and safe and out of visual sight. This is also a good idea if the radio employs a backlit display and or any other functioning lights that might be visible at night. In the case of the R2 and many of the super cheap radios, there is no illuminated display. If radios need to be worn externally, lights can be covered with electrical tape. I'm sure there are other points some might think of, and if you do, please leave them in the comments section below. Doing all of the above will help to limit your chances of being detected and to keep your comms more secure. Of course, as mentioned, this is only a very thin layer, but it is better than nothing. And it's also not just your target you want to keep from hearing your plans, it will also help keep the comms out of the way of kids and other users who sometimes have a tendency to mess about and interfere just for fun. In this instance I have chosen the Radio Odyssey R2, but there are other smaller form factor radios that employ voice scrambling. Check the Chinese marketplace out and you will find many. I hope that you have found this video informative and fun and that it proves that you can legally employ tactics on a budget to help keep your comms a bit more secure. Whether you are tracking criminals or simply giving your security staff a bit more privacy, this is a cheap entry into more secure radio communications. There are plenty of other videos on my channel and others like Ringway Manchester and Radio Cification that will detail how you program and use cables to help improve radio security as already mentioned. Remember to be safe and please only use this as a general guide. I wouldn't recommend or condone using cheap radios like these for search and rescue or life critical operations. This is just a fun guide as to what you can do to shore things up a little if on a limited budget.
Thanks again, and thanks if you've subscribed. I'm now over 3,000 subs, so I really appreciate that, guys. We'll catch you on the next one.